What's up, Coin Conceded crowd? I'm Rob from Velen's Chosen Podcast. And I'm Eve. And I'm Grant. And you're about to hit your first turn for... Coin Conceded. Greetings. Hello. Greetings. My greetings. Well met. I greet you. Greetings, traveler. Greetings, friend. The pleasure is mine. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 114 of Coin Concede, a Hearthstone podcast dedicated to making the competitive side of the game more accessible to you. My name is Kenny, and I go by KCCO Gamer. And joining us from Gadgets and New York, we have Ridiculous Hat. It's here. Golden Catacombs is here. All right. And from Ka- Karazan, California, we have Bodicus. We made it, Kenny. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're here. You're not in flames. So yes. Yeah. Very very lucky. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably get to that later. But uh, yeah. And also from uh, under a city, our guest this week is Watchman from Villains Chosen. Hey. hey hey everybody! So happy about cards being here. Happy to talk about them. Such excite. Much wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> not wow. That's so, a different game. Yes. Much Hearthstone. There we go. Uh, so yeah, well, why don't we get go ahead and get started? So, um, first of all, I do want to say thank you for those that are listening and joining us uh, from week to week on our podcast or even live. Thank you for joining us. We do want to say thank you because you are in a large uh, support. I'm not even making sense this week. <laughs> I've been <laughs> away from everything. But As, uh, I don't know, Kenny. Did you have any major life events this week? Maybe, maybe. Um, I'm just excited all around. Like it's, it's the holiday season. I have a new baby and yeah, everything is just all happening all at once, but, uh, new expansion. So yeah, if you'd like to find out ways to, uh, um, receive rewards and support us and in, in return, go ahead and go over to patreon.com forward slash coin concede. I, I think it is something we should mention now, at least ahead of time before those are actually, um, going to find out uh, literally, but they are making some changes at Patreon uh, that have changed what you're going to pay as a patron. Um, Had I think you can give a little bit more detail on that. I'll, I'll let you take over for that real quick. So I'm going to uh, throw you on the spot. Well, no, throw <laughs> away. So it's, gotcha. we haven't dug into this a ton uh, as a podcast because the news just came out today, but there were previous fees that were charged to the to the creators, and typically that was between two and ten percent of the patron contributions. Um, and the patron uh, and Patreon paid about five percent. Um, right now, the creators are gonna. It's gonna be changed. The creators don't pay the p the fees. The patrons pay the fees, which is two point nine percent and thirty five cents. So it depends on each pledge. There is a long article that I've linked in the chat. And we'll link in the show notes as well about why the change is being made. We're going to analyze what this means to us. But be aware that if you continue to pledge what you've been pledging, you will be charged a little bit more. And we're going to look to adapt our structure to make sure that we that we make sure you feel like you're getting your value of any money you give us support. Now, we never make this podcast for the money. This is not for the money. This is a labor of love for us. We're here to be a part of the community. We're here to talk to you. I'm not going to lie to you and say that the the financial support doesn't help because it really does make a difference in the amount of time we put in and the equipment we have and making sure that we can give you the best experience. We were able to get that live BlizzCon episode to you as well. But it is never about the money. If it ever feels to the point that you feel like your your contribution isn't worth it or that you your financial situation changes, you do what's right for you, and you'll be welcome as a member of our community no matter what you do. But we wanted you to be aware that if you continue your current pledge – you will be charged a little bit more for the same amount of expected contribution, and you should know that before you choose to renew or choose to cancel, whatever you choose to do. You're muted, Kenny. Thank you. I had to mute my son coming in. Um, so I will be transparent and say that our uh, 
some of our patrons actually said, hey, uh, it's, it's a little bit tight this month, obviously, with the seasons and or things that are going on. Um, times change, you know. So even if you need, if it becomes a money issue, like by all means, we're not going to be upset or anything. You're still a part of the community. You know, we're not going to see you any different things happen. So mm-hmm. I think, Grant, you were a patron, weren't you? And you ended up, I'm going to put it on your spot. I, I don't think he was. I don't think I, I was. I want, to say, I want to say that there was something, I'm trying to remember who it was, but someone uh, was a patron and then came back months later. I was like, cool, yeah, welcome back. Uh, but they felt like they didn't leave at all. So it, it, it's imperative that we make you feel that way. So uh, yeah. we're happy for those that can contribute. And if you can't, we're still happy with you guys. We, we do this for you. <laughs> Yeah, our patrons are just extremely important to us, and we want to make sure that uh, you feel like you're getting uh, getting value out of being a patron. And uh, yeah, just you know, we really appreciate uh, everybody who contributes. And if you feel like this change uh, means that you you can't, uh, it's really not a big deal. We'll still, it's still. You know, we'll still be here. You'll still be a big part of the community, like Hat and Kenny both said. Great. Let's get to it. Uh, let's talk about our ladder this week. Uh, I'm going to start with our guest, Watchman. Oh, yeah. Well, I had a kind of a grindy week. I got to 10 with uh, Easy Big Priest because um, that's one of the two classes that I do not have in gold and the other one being Warrior. Um, so I was just like, all right, I'm just going to play some Priest. Uh and gosh dang, it was a grind. People were playing weird stuff right before the expansion. Um, so I got to 10, and I uh, I took a day off or so, and then the expansion dropped today. And so I tried a bunch of gimmicky decks and just got wasted. And no big deal because, you know, I'm at the floor. But, um, yeah, it's it's a good place to be for the start of an expansion. Um, not a lot of pressure. So that's my week so far. <laughs> That's pretty much what I had uh, lined up. I was planning on getting to 10 before the expansion. Uh released and and then i would feel okay with you know having the rest of the month to get to five like my end goal but i think i may push a little bit more it depends on how this turns out i don't know how quickly i'll pick up on the, the meta and everything too and I, I have a lot more to think about as far as wild because i like to stick in wild mm. um but uh, like i mentioned earlier uh, you know <laughs> my uh they my son was scheduled to be or his due date he wasn't scheduled because uh, it was natural but um yeah he was his due date was the 12th of this month so it's another five days from now (laughs) and uh he ended up coming on the fourth so uh that was kind of a little quick and hey let's get going they came real quick and so i didn't get (laughs) to my my goal but i'm very happy he's here very happy we can relax i'm off work now i can kind of relax and enjoy the the release when i can and uh yeah I'll, i'll get to 10 in no time but Dungeon runs may keep me from getting on ladder a little bit more than uh, I was expecting. Mm. So, uh, speaking of dungeon runs, hat have you or Bodicus? I'm sorry. Uh, I know that you played a little bit there, here and there. Hat, I think you've been playing a little bit, but let's get with Bodicus first. Uh, so yeah, I've had I had a pretty good start to the month. Uh, I. My rank five boss was actually none other than Rod Johnson of the Tier Five podcast, <laughs> and uh, it, it was it was kind of a bad feeling because I was just sitting there watching his stream and I'm playing and then I I'm, I'm queuing up and then I see the Nemzi portrait and I'm like oh no, and then of course in the top left I see Akeda. <laughs> his name there i'm just like oh no and so i quickly type the deck i'm playing in his chat and leave his leave his stream but uh i i did end up emerging victorious there and uh got to rank five and i believe he got to rank five the next day so i felt good that i didn't (laughs) cause him to uh uh to go back down after that but uh i've gotten a big or i hit rank five with uh zubot paladin on NA, and then uh, I also ground out a lot of games over on Asia and was able to get to rank five over on Asia with uh, the traditional uh, zoo list I've been playing. And I've actually had like a big outcry of people saying that they've been using my list, which is really weird for me because I usually don't 
kind of make lists. And my list is very similar to a lot of ones that came before it, but I appreciate everybody who's telling me that they're doing well with it and I'm glad it's working. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, with some minor changes, it'll still be good after, since the expansion came out. Hmm. Speaking of making lists, I'm, I'm excited to see a uh, hat, with his new lists for the expansion. He tends to do this at the beginning of every expansion. I'm looking forward to you opening your packs, but let's hear about your week first. So I took a little bit of a step back from the game this week. Not that I didn't play, but the meta was definitely frustrating me a little bit more than I wanted to, and time is something of a short commodity this time of year in my industry. Um, so I've been playing you know, here and there, mostly Zoo, but I've been trying a little bit of everything. I played some Face Hunter. That was fun. Um, Zoo was the only deck that I really was playing that had more than a 50% win rate, but I opened up my phone today on the train on the way to, uh, way into the city and, uh, Dungeon Run is the best train mode they've ever made because I was hesitant to play ladder games before because of partial focus and turn limits and disconnections and Dungeon Run Mm -hmm. solves all of those problems immediately while being super fun to play and interesting and right now I'm halfway through a quest rogue dungeon run, and I could not be having more fun with the mode. It's it's pretty much everything I was looking for in a in a single player or lower anxiety Hearthstone experience. So immediately after the podcast we're doing right now, I'm going to jump on stream jump on stream and open a ton of packs with whoever else in the cast is able to stick around as well. We'll have a nice group session, and we're just gonna open up Hearthstone top decks like I do this time every post release because they already have multiple pages of pro and streamer deckless and we're just going to jam as many as we can and play a bunch of games of a bunch of different stuff and and have a good time but i really like dungeon run i also really like when i opened hearthstone today they just gave me a rogue weapon they're like do you need a rogue legendary you look like a guy that needs a rogue legendary here take this dagger so is (laughs) is that going to keep happening like am i just going to keep opening the game and getting rogue cards because that'd be okay. Sounds like a nice life to me. That's, yeah. I mean, I didn't choose the rogue life. Rogue life chose me. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to? Do we want to talk about uh, what we've got or what we've opened so far? I have and, opened at this point? zero packs and one king's bane. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> my, mine is also short. I opened uh, 113 packs, both hunter legendaries, both warrior legendaries, a king's bane and my free was the mage weapon. So considering how few legendaries it was, it was still a pretty pretty good haul, I, I think. Mm. Obviously, the warrior ones are kind of eh, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the mage weapon and Kingsbane, at least. Now those are the two that I didn't get, too. So, um, Grant, what about you? Yeah, I, got, I did pretty well. I got uh, Katharina, Winter Wisp. I pulled... Mm. Dragon Collar Alana or Alana, however you say it. I pulled both Paladin legendaries, the weapon nice. and Lanessa. Um, I see what else did I get? I pulled uh, Rin, the first disciple, which is going to be good for the memes. I got the warrior uh, weapon, which I'm not terribly excited about. That was my free one, but it should be fine. And I pulled all the neutral legendaries except for the darkness. And I kind of wanted the darkness because I want to see how that car plays out because. Um, <laughs> I wanted to try it in sort of like a almost like a mill style or like a, a gadget sand uh, miracle rogue kind of thing. So I wanted to try that, but I was pretty pleased with my outcome. I mean, I I think I opened like 134 packs, so I opened quite a bit. Um, most of those, other than the pre order, were I earned gold. I farm gold like crazy, so I think I had like almost 8,000 gold. So it was it was good for me Jeez. today. So I'm not going to complain. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was right there with you. I, I had the pre-purchase, and then the rest was gold. I bought uh, with gold, and I opened 140 packs, 141 with the extra packs we got or whatever. But, um, And I was I actually had a really good – I was just jamming packs. I was like, I'm not going to stream it this time because that it takes – even it like slows down my computer, <laughs> and uh, it makes it much more drawn out and like, oh, okay. I was like, I, I just don't have the time. I'm just going to jam them, and then we'll leave for the – we had a doctor's appointment for the baby, the baby's first doctor's appointment. But so I was trying to get that done before I can get back and pre- get the um, podcast stuff set up. But um, yeah, I, I I opened 141 packs uh, outside of the free one, you the free legendary weapon you get, uh, which I got the priest one. 
Um, I got 13 legendaries out of 141 packs. Wow. That's pretty so, good. That's, that's pretty stinking good. That's like one God. every 10. Right. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, I counted, yeah, it was 13, and that's not including Marin either. So, mm, um, wow. Yeah. So I think I have eight left. Uh, if I wanted to, I have a 6,000 dust. Uh, I may get some more packs because I'm I'm wondering if I have enough for the epics and and rares and stuff. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think you did we'll, just fine, we'll Kenny. See. I think you did okay. I did plenty good. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> you did good, kid. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Alrighty. So I apologize if you hear the baby screaming. You're pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to kick it over to Hat so I can kind of mute here. Uh, for news. Uh, well, as far as the raffle. Oh yeah. So oh, oh, yeah, because we're gonna we're gonna kind of hold it over another week or so, just to kind of make sure we've got everybody. But yep, uh, mm-hmm. no new pledges this week, but we are going to continue with the we're wrapping up our raffle contest. Which, if you recall, if you submit an iTunes review, then you get entered in a raffle. We have a few this week. We're gonna wait till next week to make sure we got all the ones that were entered in the month of November. And we're going to pull some names and see who gets a free coaching session. And thank you to everyone that submitted a review so far. We will talk about the reviews we've gotten as well when we get to that section. So thank you very much. And uh, shall we talk about some news? Yes. Hey, guess what, guys? Uh, Cobalts and Cataclysms is live. Woo! <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. So, just a couple of things we want to mention uh, on top of obviously being live, but um, I wanted to cover the first thing. We normally don't talk about Arena, but uh, I did see an announcement with Arena that there are, um, like, I guess the appearance rates have changed. So uh, they said no non-basic neutral classic minions represent the baseline for draft appearance rates. Okay. So they gave like uh, the different examples. Basic and classic neutral minions is five times. Non-basic classic neutral minion is one times. Most recent set neutral minion is two times. Basic class minion two times. So they go through and, and uh, mention the details of how that specifically has changed in the arena. Uh, I'm not sure you guys... Um, have checked or play arena much or if that is going to change anything you looking forward to the changes or have you seen them i think I it's literally, a, a change for the better i literally played no arena last month because i really <laughs> wanted my my month in hearthstone to not give me arena stats for once and uh i had a pretty good <laughs> pretty good month to uh to have that not happen because i had a pretty sick 24 game win streak that was nice. Dude. In, sta- in standard. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh that was pretty gosh. sweet. 24 yeah, I don't, games. You yeah, I don't animal. plan on <laughs> don't plan on playing Arena, but hopefully this is what um Arena people want because I do think it is a, a good format for other people. I mean I really I, I'm a fan of detailed, transparent, consistent, and regular changes. So my faith in Blizzard, I, I can't tell you if these particular numbers are the right or wrong numbers. I can tell you that Blizzard communicating them exactly and frequently making small changes is the design philosophy I want to see with the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I, I've been playing a lot more Arena. Like last month, I didn't really think I was going to go for Legend, and so I played a ton of Arena just because I just wanted to get better at it. And like oddly enough ended up hitting legend but then like i find myself caring more about arena so like anytime they have changes i'm i'm all ears um but i i don't think i play enough yet to really notice the small nuance type of changes that they end up making so we'll see probably be fine you were trying to get the golds there i see what you're doing Mm -hmm. all right and uh the other thing i noticed this was um with the update on the phone uh i logged in before catacomb catacombs was live so the cards weren't available yet, but it was after the patch. So first thing I noticed, they, the Hearth and Home cinematic was, replaced the previous cinematic. I don't know if you guys saw that, too. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I yeah. skipped it because I hadn't seen it. <laughs> I didn't know. I'd seen it, but I, I was like, I'll watch it again. I didn't know I could skip it either. So. You just touched the screen and bada boom. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Bada bing. And then also the dungeon run quests. So I, I was originally thinking that they were going to be three quests like that take up your quests. Uh, but I guess you get one after completing the other. So mm-hmm. just wanted to mention that there. Any Anything That's else in there? Yeah, I like that. Because then you don't have to worry about, like, people didn't have to worry if they didn't complete, like, all their quests the day before, which I did anyway, but uh, anybody who wasn't able to get their quest done the, the day before it came out didn't lose anything, which is good. Cool. Yeah. You guys want to mention anything else there or, or any bug fixes you were, like, thank goodness. Well, I had some I had some people say that they didn't get their three packs for logging in right away. It was kind of like a login issue, but they eventually mm-hmm. got it. It just wasn't right away as soon as they logged in the first time, but... So I don't think it ended up being anything serious, though. I actually don't see this in the show notes. Didn't I thought I saw something about game pausing between friendly battles when there's a disconnect? Y- yes, um, that, that was seems part real of, important. Yeah, it's part, part of the part patch of the notes. Purposes. So the, um, the the bullet point I'm going to read here: improved reconnection and UI for friendly challenges. A new match pause pop up will display a countdown while waiting for opponent to reconnect. When a player reconnects, the turn timer will restart. And the game menu will display end game instead of concede for the player that's still in the game. So that if you're being told to not finish the game or you have to not finish the game, when you click end game, it's not like your opponent will log back in as you click concede and then see your portrait blow up and take a screenshot. Um, by clicking end game as the player left in the game, there's no way for that to be to be cheesed. You can't get a screenshot that proves something happened that didn't actually happen. And mm. it's just a lot cleaner for tournaments in that if your opponent disconnects, you know what's going that. on. I didn't even think about the... the rep- I, I never knew that was a thing. <laughs> it's people will take whatever edges they can get in open cups. Yeah. And so if you reconnect right when your opponent ends the game, I mean, it's it, it just means that if your opponent disconnects, you are incentivized to stay in forever. Um, um, but now I think it can be handled a little bit differently. I don't envision most players taking advantage of the end game functionality either way, or if they do, it could be used maliciously, right? Your opponent disconnects for 10 seconds. You're way behind on board. Oh, well, I had to end the game. Um, I, I see rules being put in place around this, but the UI and the, the game being paused seems a lot better, a lot, lot better than what was before, which was literally nothing. That's good. Mm. Good mention. I like it. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on. So the next part of the Tale of the Fox came out, part four. Um, left in the show notes there. Not Nothing really to talk about, just another nice background for it. You guys want to say anything real quick about it? I, I figured not, but giving you the chance. There, there are new cards. I don't, unfortunately, have not had time to read all of the Tales of the Fox, but I hope yeah. that I do get to go back over it later. <laughs> I was I was waiting for it. Like I was thinking, okay, I'll get home. I'll I'll read the Tale of Fox uh, while I'm waiting for the patch to go live and patch went live early. <laughs> so I was uh, pleasantly surprised with that and didn't get to reading it too far. Read a little bit before the the uh, show here, but yeah. I think seems the like something thing. Velen. Go ahead. Oh, it seems like something Velen's might might go over eventually on one of the future episodes. It seems like kind of. Up your alley, potentially. Yeah, we might. It's we we have the lore master, so you know yeah. anything's possible. <laughs> She's amazing. Those lore segments are like easily my yeah. favorite part of a great show. Um, but I do think this will be a little tough to dig into because they made it up for Hearthstone. Like, yeah. Eve is really good about digging into the Azerothian WoW related lore and digging back and back into the Warcraft story. But Marin the Fox, they just made him up for this expansion, so. Uh, it's he's cool, but the entire lore you're seeing is in the tail of the fox here. Well, it could be that we could do some not trying to make give Eve more work, but uh, you could we could figure out like because w- there's references. It's not just Marin the fox in a bubble in a vacuum, right? Right. It's it's like mm-hmm. it takes place still in that world and what the relevancies of those locations and stuff like that. So I'll ask her about it. So coin can see people get a preview, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Alrighty, and then also there was a new uh, YouTube uh, segment released by Blizzard with Peter Whelan. Whelan. Uh, he's talking about spell stones and kind of like the the progression they went through them. So uh, really neat link uh, there on our show notes. 
And yeah, so I don't know if you guys watched it, but kind of insightful and, and fun to see. Uh, just a little more background. It's always nice to know a little bit more of the background part of the game and what, what they've gone through. Any comments on that? All right. Then I'm going to go to Hat with the last piece of news here. I'm going to talk about Dream, DreamHack, the, the drama going on there. So DreamHack winner. Uh, it's It was a tournament that we'll talk about in, well, immediately after this segment. But the there was some drama in the top 16. Going into the top 16, there was the belief that the tournament software was incorrectly calculating tiebreakers. And so the calculators were manually recalculated with the seven win, two loss players. There were two players that were in the top 16 that were recalculated when the math was done by hand. It turns out they were not in the top 16. They were 17th and 19th place. They started the match with the new top 16. And then when inspected closer, it turns out the original calculations were correct. That the manual recalculation was the mistake, and that the person that was moved to 17th should have been 15th. And when looked closer, the problem was not with the tournament software, only human error and miscommunication regarding newly released features. That's the exact quote from the article that, uh, that is linked here. So, oh, no. So DreamHack is doing the right thing. They're paying uh, Psycho, who's the player that was removed from the, from the top 16. They're awarding him prize winnings equal to a top 8 finish. And they're providing him with travel and a hotel room for the next DreamHack Hearthstone Grand Prix. So he'll have the full chance to compete. But they apologized. Gamer Sensei, who Psycho represented, um, said, we understand, we get it, but I can't imagine being a player manually placed outside of the top 16 because of belief that a program was, was not working when the program was working the whole time. And uh, yeah, it's just a it's just a really tough situation. Mm. Yeah, I remember seeing his response. I don't know if it was a response, but he had a comment on the whole thing. And his biggest takeaway was that, you know, playing to having the chance to be able to play to win DreamHack was worth way more than any amount of prize money that they could give out, which I totally, I totally understand as somebody who played in like competitive magic tournaments. Like it's usually not the, um, prize money you're playing for you're playing for the uh you know you're playing because you want to win the thing so i feel really bad for him uh, i'm glad that dreamhack is at least doing something uh but yeah you, you can't help but but feel feel for the guy all right that pretty much does it for the news let's go ahead and uh try and we'll try and keep the tournament section a little bit short because we got other cards and things people want to uh, go over. We're not going to go in depth, um, but yeah, we, we do want to talk about some of it. So, Hat, take it away. It's the grand tournament. All right, so we have a couple tournaments we want to talk about here briefly today. We've got the GCWC. I believe it is the Gold Club World Cup. It's a Chinese-based tournament series, kind of sort of like Trinity, but kind of sort of not. It's eight different teams that are all invited to play. Each team is three players, but unlike Trinity, where the three players play each game simultaneously, there's one pilot. These are, uh, it's a best of five, last year of standing format. Last year of standing, as a reminder, you you bring uh, X number of decks. In this case, it's four. One gets banned by your opponent, and then... Whoever wins with the deck keeps playing that deck, and whoever loses with the deck, you can't play that deck anymore. So if I were to play Jade Druid and the opponent was to bring Razakas Priest and I beat them, I keep playing Jade Druid and you can't play Razakas Priest anymore. Each class after the ban is played by a different team member. And we've got eight different teams. We're about eight days in now. We're into the elimination picture. We've got Alliance, which is Orange O's Cock and Powder, Planet Odd, which is Zixo, Surrender, and Hoy. You may remember they were in Trinity. They denied their top four invite because they were invited to play in the gcwc evolution which is pavel frozen and old boy tsm which is purple sidonian doc pone and we've got four chinese teams celestial which is tiddler tom 60229 and mitsuhide which is my pick to win the event 
LF, which is dog, but not the dog, not the American dog. This is dog with four G's. Dog. <laughs> um, got Lovely Chook and LVGE. On OM, we've got Jason Zhu, X Hope, and Trunks, which is a really strong squad as well. And then on Team RNG, we've got Biza, Leo, and Kylans. So we do have a brief bracket. Team Celestial and Team RNG have both already won in the winner's bracket, so they're going to play in the semifinals. Alliance and Evolution went down to the lower bracket. Uh, they were they were kicked out of the top four, but they still have got one more uh, one more loss before they're eliminated. The winner of LF versus TSM plays Alliance. The winner of OM versus Planet Odd plays Evolution. And those teams I just mentioned, all of them except Celestial and RNG, when they lose, they're done. So they can handle one more loss without their tournament being over. Everyone else is one and done. The early elimination rounds are underway. We'll bring you coverage of the semis and finals matches. They're happening in the next few days. I do believe the decks they're playing do not include K and C cards. I think they have to play the decks they submitted originally in the beginning of the tournament. And we should be getting a, a nice turn, uh, tournament ending here against some very competitive teams over the weekend. And that'll be the end of this tournament meta. It's being casted by our own CG Songbird, our own Korra. So make sure you check it out. It's some good casting at decidedly odd hours of the day. So if your sleep schedule is like mine, perfect to watch. Now, that tournament is ongoing. It's team-based, and it goes for a while. DreamHack winner, well, you know the DreamHacks. We just talked about them. Um, And this is a Hearthstone Grand Prix-style tournament anyone can enter. It is last year of standing. And uh, it's it happens over the course of a weekend. This is in DreamHack's home base of Sweden. 242 participants. And the top 16 was very much representative of the meta that we've seen. 16 out of 16 players brought Druid. 8 of them were aggro and 8 of them were wild growth Druid. Whether they play Jade Idols or Yasharaj is the same general concept. All 16 brought Priests, 13 of which were Raza, Razakis. Two combo priests, which is like the silence-based combo with the inner fire, divine spirit, and one dragon. Fifteen players brought Tempo Rogue, and only one lonely soul brought Evolve Shaman instead of Tempo Rogue. So, Pardub, good for you, but maybe not the right choice for this tournament. The fourth deck, there was a lot of variants. There were Mage variants, there were Murloc Paladins, and there were Zoo Warlocks and Control Warlocks. Top 16... This wasn't a big-name tournament where you had a lot of players that were going to recognize. The names that I recognized were You Need and Zananananan, which I really like saying, and I say it again, Zananananan. They were the biggest names I recognized. And as the bracket shook out, uh, we're going to talk about the finals. Yeah, it's, it's a fun name to say. Come on, Grant. It's, I think you need to put some, you know, some other words to it. You know, it's, I want to be like the Batman theme from the 60s. Batman, like, <laughs> Zananananan. <laughs> Um, Hearthstone. <laughs> I'll edit Hearthstone, that in the post. Dream hack. Yeah, Grant, we're going to contract you to make our uh, to make our Hearthstone tournament theme song. <laughs> Deal. Yes. <laughs> so the two players in the finals were Zump and Vanek. Zump is Swedish. Uh, Vanek, I believe, is German. Zump managed to three one every opponent he played. His lineup had aggro du- aggro druid and control warlock to go along with uh, with priest and druid or uh, with Priest and Rogue. And Vanek had, uh, he swept early, but then his later matches were three and twos. On the way to the finals, he had Jade Druid and Zoo Warlock. The finals were pretty unusual. That's the one match we really want to go into today. There was a crazy tempo draw between Raza and Zoo, but not the way you think. The Priest was the tempo deck. Turn two, Radiant Elemental, Holy Smite, your minion. Turn three, one mana shadow word pain. Your councilmen play wild pyro. Turn four, Akanai soul priest. And the zoo couldn't do anything. They had to tap on turn three and just say go. And the tempo draw, the priest killed on turn five. Turn five. Two drop, three drop, four drop. And these were not your average two drops. This was a river croc, a blood fen raptor, and a senjin shield master. And that was enough to clear the board. (laughs) along with the <laughs> removal and the damage from the hero power. So it's not what you see every day. Raza quickly <laughs> gets countered by Jade. The Jade had triple ramp, triple Jade minion, and then a UI on 10 mana immediately after a board clear. That went exactly how you think it went. Rogue countered right back, and I want to point out Zump's play here. Zump knew that his opponent Vanek had mind control tech. There was not a single turn in the game until turn 10 that he put four minions on the board, and he traded off minion number four 
every chance he got. It was really amazing to watch. Vanek had to play out mind control tech as a three mana three three and buff it with Mark of the Lotus because Zump played around it so consistently. And and Zump's patience was rewarded. He pushed into late game with a parade of five five into five five, with including a Lotus Assassin into an eight eight Van Cleef into a into a Lich King, and UI was nowhere near enough. Then we queue up the Rogue Mirror. Zump goes turn one Kalisath. And he's got a backstab and a firefly. And Vanek's hand on turn four is Cobalt Scale Bane, Vile Spine Slayer, Vile Spine Slayer, Bone Mare, and Cold Blood. Ugh. Not really it great on bad, turn man. four. Especially in the Rogue Mirror, when your opponent had turn one Kelaseth, turn two, backstab, firefly, firefly. And Zump wins on turn five by drawing Shadow Step to bounce back a buffed uh, Saucy Deckhand and kill his poor opponent to become the Dream Hack Champion. Well done, Azump. I will say there is one other match that I that you should go and watch. I do not want to talk about it because it is way better if you're watching it. That is the AKA Wonder versus Davidos match. Please watch that in in full. The ending is one of the best endings I've seen in any match of Hearthstone. Uh, definitely check it out. Next week we'll be covering Kobolds and Catacombs tournaments. That includes the Sydney Invitational. That includes the next round of GCWC. And that includes the next round of Trinity Gaming. Yeah, make sure you check out the Sydney Invitational. I know uh, one of our uh, podcasting brethren, Blister Guy, is going to be uh, putting out some infographics during that whole thing. So I'm pretty excited that he's he's going to be doing that. I'm looking forward to seeing all the all the deck lists that they come out with that weekend. Yes, nice. and well the done. Sydney Invitational and the Trinity Series will both be with Kobolds and Catacombs cards. So those are both happening this weekend, and the participants have two days to make decks. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very curious to see what comes out there, and I hope that we see a lot of... Well, I don't want to spoil it, but I want to see King Tog Waggles and Rin the First Disciples. That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh... Who knows? Maybe we'll see something that's just completely off the wagon. It'll be. I, I like the fact that they have two days because it 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 can it changes everything. Uh, it, you're not just a really good player of. of um, I mean, you're also a good deck builder and uh, kind of can foresee. Uh, or, or who knows? Maybe they're just throwing it to the wind. <laughs> but um, I'd I'd hate to say that these kind of players don't. Uh, do their research and, and try and figure out as much as they can before they submit. So uh, we'll go ahead and see uh, next week. All right. So let's cover our uh, thank yous here real quick. Uh, I, I give the first one here, our iTunes review uh, to, or actually we have a bumper for this. Uh, let me take a step back. Rock is dead. All righty. So we have three reviews for iTunes. I'm going to give the first one a hat because he's good at paraphrasing. It's a super long one. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. This review is from Shintjin85 from the USA. It's titled Solid. A couple of years back, I was driving an hour to an hour and a half to and from work. I listened to just about every Hearthstone-related podcast on iTunes and still didn't have enough to fill the time. Since then, my commute has been cut to about 15 to 20 minutes. Good for you, Shintjin. Good for you. So my selection had to be reduced because there simply wasn't enough time for everything, but I'm happy to say Coin Concede made the cut. You guys make things very relatable and give me confidence that I could or and should do it someday myself. I'd love to hear more about how someone like me, aka an everyday dude that is capable of being really good if I invest the time, could make that transition from casual player to Coin Concede levels and beyond. Well, Shin Chen, first of all, thank you very much for the kind reviews. Glad to hear we are still on your phone or whatever device you used to listen to podcasts. The best way to get into <laughs> podcasting is to start a podcast. And understand your first bunch of episodes will be casting into the void. Your listeners come with time, but effort yields results. I think the best example of this recently, my buddy Iona Kata over at Tier 5, he just said, you know what? That's what I was going to mention. I yeah. like making podcasts. I like Hearthstone. I hang out in streams. I'm going to talk about Hearthstone. And he's put together a really nice little community over there, and uh, and it's growing every day, and the man... Puts more effort in than anyone else I can think of. So props to him. He's definitely a great resource to learn how to get this sort of thing off the ground. And uh, I would call Tier 5 successful in that sense by most definitions. There's nothing. There's no advice I can give you better than get out there and do it. 
and you'll learn along the way and you'll have missteps and you'll learn a lot about audio editing. I know I have, and there's a lot more to it than anyone ever realized exists, but until you start doing it, you'll never learn it. Mm. I, I will back that up. And actually I was in talks with Rod actually, uh, with someone else who was asking, Hey, I'm thinking about starting a Hearthstone podcast. What do you guys think? And uh, he's the green speed. So he's coming up with something to come up soon. Uh, keep an eye out for our new uh, podcast there. It should be good, um, especially with those that are limited on time uh, and figuring out what they want to do with that time and their Hearthstone media. A little tease there. So next thank you uh, is titled Helping Noobs by Spartacus Fett 999 from the USA. Uh, Spargus has joined us live uh, in Twitch before, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, I appreciate hearing from players that are ranked higher than myself. You can learn a lot from listening to this fun and intelligent show. Recommend. Thank you so much for your uh, review. We do appreciate it. And thanks for, gosh, being a part of the community. Uh, I'm going to let the third one be taken over by Bonicus. So this is titled An Excellent All-Around Hearthstone Podcast. It's by Volkai, who's been hanging out in our Discord. He says, a great weekly show that will keep you up to date on Hearthstone news and the goings-on in the game's competitive esports scene. Additionally, the Dexplanation segment is a great primer on important aspects of gameplay, such as how to mulligan to win or how to successfully play top-tier decks like Tempo Rogue, Coin Concede knows its niche in the Hearthstone podcast community and does an excellent job of filling it. Thanks so much, Volkai. Uh, that's a really great review. Appreciate it. All righty. So that's it for the reviews. I'm going to uh, kick it over to Bodicus for our explanations this week. You want to explain it to our listeners? So in the interest of everyone's time, we are going to have a bit shorter kind of card review section this uh, this week for the regular show. We're um, going to just kind of talk about the classes in general, which classes kind of are, were the winners, which ones maybe didn't get as many cards as they needed to uh to perform, uh, so we're kind of go going to go over the gist of how, how every class did now that we've seen all the cards, we've been kind of able to digest them a little bit and, uh, you know, just kind of see where they're going to be at um, instead of having a four to five hour card review section where we go over every card in excruciating detail. We, uh, we want to make sure that you're uh, time is well spent, so you can kind of get more of an idea. And there are plenty of podcasts right now that are doing uh, full set card reviews uh, for you to listen to. So hopefully you can you can get something out of this and and take it uh, take it and be able to use it on, on ladder. So I guess we're going to start with Druid first, and. Uh, I believe about... I, I did kind of a, a quick thing on Druid here. Um, I'll, I'll mention what, I, what I'm going to say about it, and I'll give it up to you guys to kind of comment on it. Um, so Druid. Uh, Druid, at least for me, seems to be like a flop after the their dominance in the meta over the last... Well, yeah, when were they bad last? <laughs> Forever. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Team 5 actually looks to be implementing two different types of effects, uh, which is the gaming, gaining armor and then the playing minions less than four uh, with the recruit. So recruit being the keyword there. See it up there. And um, yeah, you may continue to see what it was uh, good before uh, the implementation um, with what was in the meta. So I'm not expecting too much to come from these, but... Um, I may not be the best person to foresee what the meta is like. What do you guys feel? I'm going to... Uh, let's kick over to Hat real quick. I or if real quick is a, a, an option. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not really, but I, I admire your optimism. Um, <laughs> Druid is, I think, the most nerf class in the history of the game. And it's still always good. 
because mana ramp, card choice, and card draw are three things the class does and are three man- mechanics that are innately powerful in card games. And I think they got a lot of strong cards. Um, branching Paths, Lesser Jasper Spellstone, Greedy Sprite. So Branching Paths, four mana, choose twice. Draw a card, give your minions plus one attack, or gain six armor. It does a little bit of everything. Lesser Jasper Spellstone is... One mana deal two to a minion. If you gain three armor, it upgrades to deal four. If you gain three armor again, it upgrades to deal six. I have holy smited so many flame imps in the past two months. And now Druid gets <laughs> to do that. And sometimes one mana deal six. Seems really good. Greedy Sprite I've been seeing in some deck lists today. It's just, if you're not playing Jade Blossom, this is better than Jade Blossom. Because you pay three mana for a three attack minion. And either they trade into it and it's just like Jade Blossom except adult three. Or they don't trade into it and then you get three attack and then you get the crystal anyways. So, I think there's a lot here. And I think Oaken Summons, if you build your deck correctly, it's just playing a good minion that you know you're going to get and also gaining six armor. It's four mana, recruit a minion that costs four or less, and then gain six armor. Um, I think there's a lot here. And I, I actually talked about Barkskin on Hearthstone Top Decks. It's one mana yeah, for that. a common spell. Gain plus three, uh, give a minion three health and gain three armor. That's a lot of, that's a really efficient deal for one mana. So, I don't know if Druid got any really potent aggressive cards, but all of these cards seem very efficient and very uh, functional and have a lot of utility. And it'd be hard for me to say that's not a win here. I don't know. Bot, Grant, what do you guys think? Well, well I just, think... Oh, I, sorry, I just had a, no, I just had a real quick comment. The mm-hmm. uh, hat only really wanted to talk about bark skin because of the efficiency of the butt strengthening. <laughs> it's, I mean, you found me out, and I'm not going to say I'm not, but at the same time, it's one mana for a lot of butt. It's like butt on the go. It's super discounted. <laughs> anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Grant. What, what do you think about Druid? I was just going to say that it seems like some of the cards are here uh, for when stuff rotates out, like Greedy Sprite is kind of a clear substitution for Jade Blossom. Um, but it also seems they're kind of trying to push kind of like a taunt mid-range kind of druid kind of archetype that won't take shape for a little while i don't think i don't think it's something you're going to find necessarily this month but being able to put minions down that have a lot of uh, health and then you know i'm going to kind of spoil it but i think uh, void ripper is going to (laughs) make this some of the stuff you can do with druid cards in uh, connection with like spreading plague it's going to make a lot of minions that can get a a lot of health, you can't kill them very quick, and then you use Void Ripper to flip it, and all of a sudden those minions that have no attack have a lot of attack and you lose. So I think there's some I think there's something here. I, I agree. Um I think Druid I like the removal. A little bit of removal is nice for Druid. Um I like the option of branching paths. So I think it's I think these cards will eventually uh become more valuable as time goes on. So I'm not going to write it off just yet because I still think Druid is good. I think you could probably currently run Big Druid and do just fine with it, aside from all the new cards. I think the main point of what I was trying to say is here, these cards are going to be built off of what's already been strong on Druid. It's not going to be something completely yeah. different. So um, I like Hat's input on the armor and how efficient some of those cards are, or even Spellstone, but um, I, I would have to agree with that, and thanks for pointing that out. I didn't really take a look at that part of it, but um, yeah, let's 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 have a bot take over the next one. So you want to talk about Hunter? Yeah. So Hunter seems like I think it's going to hinge a lot on the synergies that they're trying to push. They obviously have two two kind of directions that they seem to be taking the class. They either want the all spell Hunter deck, or they want like it seems like there might be like a, you know, controlish, you know, maybe recruit some, some beasts, maybe bigger, kind of a bigger hunter deck. And, uh, I'm not so sure about the bigger hunter deck, but I actually streamed this, uh, Barnes like controlling hunter deck over the weekend and surprisingly went nine and four. And now I know that's an extremely small sample size, but it, Felt like there might have been something there, and I played a couple games before, um, before on my stream with a all spell hunter deck. And uh, let me tell you, to my side and the emerald spellstone are quite powerful. Uh, 
they're definitely very powerful cards. So I think there's something there. Flanking Strike, also just a very, very strong card. Um, I, I wouldn't sleep on this on this class. I, I know Hunter kind of needed a lot because it wasn't doing so well before uh, the set came out, but I'm hoping that kind of the mix of all these cards are are going to get somewhere. Uh, Grant, what do you, you kind of what are you thinking? Oh, I think that I like I kind of like the where Hunter's going right now. I've actually played some today for you know the half a dozen games I could I got to put on today after the set was released, and I tried the Secret Hunter and I tried um, I wanted to try the Spell Hunter. I just hadn't had a chance to build it yet. I think that the Spellstone is going to be an MVP card. Um, that card is strong. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it's amazing when you can drop you know, three, uh, four, three, 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 five after kind of holding your own, it just feels super strong and swingy. Um, and that was playing more of a minion based secret kind of deck. Um, I was a little disappointed with some of the early, uh, minion play. Like I was trying to run secrets. So I was like, see, I, I was trying creep puffs, uh, pirate. It has like an early pirate build with like the big heavy minions, like uh, swamp King and, uh, King crush at the end. Um, and I never got to those because I died because there's just not a lot of strength in the middle game if you don't kind of play your pieces right. So, but I do see a lot of potential. Like there's some stuff like, oh, if I could just get the cards in this order, or if I could, you know, have a better front game or something, something like that, or a better mid game, depending on uh, what you think the deck lacks or not. I th- I think it's got a lot of potential. Um, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes because I think the cards are super interesting. I think the hunter weapon that totally fills your hand with spells is super cool. Um, I want to say that's probably one of the more powerful effects of of all the weapons that seems to like give you an instant gratification um especially because when you're running all spells it seems like you probably burn through them pretty quick but um yeah i'm, I'm really excited about it because i kind of wanted to make hunter great again for a long time <laughs> yeah i was actually i had two notes to say and the first one about the bow i played it a couple times and uh, it felt really strong when I played it, but then I also looked at a couple of the cards that it gave me, and there's a couple that are like uh, hand buffing cards for beasts, and I was like, oh, oh, these are these aren't very good. And then I played Deathstalker Rexar, and I was like, oh, okay. So I like play the bow, and then I start adding beasts to my hand with Deathstalker Rexar, and it kind of makes all these cards work. So uh, that I think that there might be something there. And then the other thing I was going to say, because I know that, you know, obviously Reddit went crazy about that card by my side. And I heard a lot of people talking about uh, talking about it and like having two animal companions stapled into one card. I don't know why people are saying that that's not good. I think you can basically ignore the thing that says just summon an animal companion for six mana, because if this is in your deck, you're never just summoning one animal companion with this card. Like animal companion was already a lot of, a lot of stats for the card that it is. And getting two of that card in one card is I think really strong. And it so far it's performed pretty well for me, but I don't know what you guys have any other comments. That card, I gotta say, I threw shade on it a couple weeks ago when we talked about that card, and but then I saw it on stream, and I really yeah. had second thoughts. I, when uh, Day Nine was playing, I'm like, oh, oh, because they were running an all spell hunter deck, and I thought mm-hmm. to myself, okay, well, in this case, I really don't mind being wrong because that actually looks fun, and it looks like it's yeah. pretty powerful. So I, I think I'm swinging the other direction on that card, despite what Reddit says. I'm, think, I'm looking forward to try it out. That uh, mm-hmm. it just looks fun. That's my only comment. I, I think know. flanking strike also was a big was a big boost to that. Uh, like I saw him play the spell stone, and I was like, "Oh wow, that that looked pretty powerful." And granted, they're playing you know these pre constructed decks, which are not meta decks, but I'm hoping that it gets there. What were you gonna say, Hat? Has there been any other card in the history of Hearthstone that summoned multiple animal companions have been has been effective? Like maybe one that got nerfed, like maybe Call of the Wild. <laughs> like yeah. we've yeah, learned quite good. We've learned that multiple animal companions in one card is really powerful for the right cost. And so while mm-hmm. six is more fair than eight for all three, and while this one can roll multiples of the same, and it's not as consistent, if you if you pay six mana for for double Huffer or double Misha, that's like gross. That's super gross. Mm-hmm. So 
it's just it's really efficient i mean reddit will rage what reddit wants to rage at and i have unsubscribed to the main hearthstone subreddit for years now because it's it's such a negativity amplifier that and it's such an echo chamber where it gets to the point that the common belief floats to the top and and contrary beliefs frequently sink to the bottom and i i I see the skepticism around the concept of all spell hunter. I think it is reasonably mm-hmm. skeptical skeptical of Blizzard very, very clearly pushing an archetype that has never worked in the past. But I wouldn't be surprised if test it. And boy, flanking strike. I'm gonna talk about that card for a while a little bit later in the show. Because it is really good. Really, really good. And the spellstone, if you if you upgrade that once, it's five mana for a six six. If you upgrade that twice, it is disgusting. Yeah. Yep, and the condition to upgrade it really is not not that bad. Where some of the other spell stones, the condition is actually somewhat hard to meet. Mm-hmm. So anything else about that, or do you guys want to move to mage? Let's go to mage. All right. So I have down here that I think Mage won pretty big in this set. I think it has one of, if not the most powerful cards in Leyline Manipulator, as well as a bunch of other pretty strong playables. I think both of their legendaries are quite solid. Uh, I think they could both definitely see play. And a lot of the commons and rares uh, either develop existing decks or could even spawn new archetypes. Uh, I think the two epic cards, I uh, they don't look super great to me, but I, they do look fun. Uh, I don't know how much they get there, but overall, I think I think the class came out pretty good. Uh, you know, I think dra- I've heard a lot of people talk about Dragon Caller Alana. Um, pretty excited about that card. Seems like one of those cards. It's almost like it might replace like a medieve or something where like you're not uh instead of being like a value over time it's kind of just a card you play it and you're like i'm gonna kill you next turn unless you deal with this card and it's just like a one card demands an answer right away um type of thing and you're already playing cards like in a deck like that you would just play cards like a control mage like blizzard and uh you know flame strike i could imagine a ton of situations where you just on eight eight mana you go blizzard doomsayer and then dragon caller alana the next turn and it's like you know deal with this or die uh kenny what do you what do you think you like you like him where how mage turned out uh yeah i'm liking it i i'm gonna have to kind of fall back on actually playing it I, i it's probably one of my least played classes right now uh, but I'm looking forward to a change, something that I might be more interested in playing. So I'll keep my comments short and sweet there. Grant, what about you? Oh, yeah. This is one of the ones I'm going to kind of go for because I love me some Control Mage. Um, yeah, yeehaw. Um, because I was, I've been scheming in my head like, okay, because of the nine cost in for Alana, that, I want to play that card because I want to see a lot of dragons on on the board, right? And I want, And I know that it's not necessarily difficult when you could when you think about already in control mage, you have the meteorite, you have blizzard, you have flame strike, you have firelands portal. Um, and so that's, you know, two, three, possibly four good dragons on the board, but what does it replace? Do you want to replace Alex Straza with it? Do you want to replace Frostless Jaina with it? What do you want to replace with it? I think Medivh might be a, a good replacement or I mean, replace it for Medivh. I mean, but I also was wondering, well, dragon synergy, you know, uh, would that work? Uh, what kind of build could I come up with with that? I think either way, you still are playing a control mage with a lot of the spell shell that you would want. But I think the card kind of, I guess it puts a different spin, different flavor on that. And I think it could be really fun, especially because the dragons and priests can't really deal with that. Except for maybe, uh, sci- what, Psychic Scream or whatever that that card is. That uh, could be a bit of a problem. Shadow Reaper Anduin's pretty good against it. Yeah, that's true. I was thinking Dragonfire Potion. Yeah, um, it does so, beat that, but the, the the priest's new seven and eight more mana board clears, unfortunately, are pretty effective against this, but it does cost nine, mm-hmm. so they're likely yeah. enough to play. Like, if, if you're playing around Anduin, you hold this until after Anduin comes down, and you say, ha-ha, you cleared the board, now deal with my five-fives. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd take a little bit of intelligent play, but 
I, that's, <laughs> I just think it's going to be cool. I think the card, it might be a sleeper card, um, because I feel like you kind of, you're, you're going to want to pl- you want to build around it. I feel it seems like, because you do have to have good spells in your deck. Um, I just hope that five fives and having that many five fives on board is actually worth it. So we'll see. All right. So if we have nothing else with mage, uh, it looks like Kenny might talk a little bit about paladin. Yeah. Let me go uh, kind of over what I wrote. Um, I, I feel like this is the, the, the part of the, like whenever there's a new set, I have a hard time telling what's going to be good or what's bad. So I feel free if uh, if you guys feel differently this, but uh, than what I'm saying here. So, but Paladin, in my opinion, again, uh, seems to be a win. Uh, so I, I'm calling it Dude Paladin just because if I call it Recruit Paladin, I, it kind of mixes with the the keyword. If that makes mm. sense. Yeah. So Dude Paladin uh, definitely maybe consistent and wild, but I don't think the cards that were added in this set are going to bring it to standard competitively. And any, I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference. Uh, but that being said. The dude energy, dude energy, and it's going to be weird getting used to that. Um, maybe a little bit uh, better for the wild uh, to intermingle with some of the, the old older cards and, and uh, see how that works. But I guess the only thing we can do is wait for time to tell us what happens. But um, dude, the dude paladin deck and synergy uh, may be under the guise of the minion buff style decks that maybe use of the class legendary. Um, so it definitely works well with the quest. And I, I noticed this with Warlock too, you know, they printed some cards that may go back to something that wasn't as good and make it better. But um, uh, so this seems like that may, that may make this a little bit of a better type deck to go and, and revisit possibly. Uh, and then the last couple of things uh, I was going to mention is keep an eye on Call to Arms and Lenesa Sansara. So Call to Arms is a four mana, recruit three minions that cost two or less. Um, definite um, value out of that. And then Lenesa Sansara was the seven mana, the one we saw on stream, the battle cry cast each spell you cast on your minions this game to this one, which is the seven mana one one. Uh, and it seems pretty good. Um the other thing I didn't really mention here is the kind of the healing aspect of the cards they've been going over, um, obviously with the spell stone, but I'm not sure. I guess there could be like a control type talent, and I don't, I don't know if that would be how that would see use in the meta. But let me kick it over to uh, Grant here first. Or I'd like to give you Ooh. first shot. <laughs> cool. Um, I actually played against a deck that was kind of running a... Um a token style of play. It wasn't like a dude paladin running like the Silverhand recruits. It was really running small, dirtily minions. And I got to say, um, I thought I was doing okay until he was able to put out call to arms and put out, cause it's two minions that cost two, uh, three minions that cost two or less. Right. Mm-hmm. And you can get some pretty decent minions out. And then he proceeded to buff them and I couldn't do anything to him. It was, kind of a angle of play that I wasn't really used to because it seemed really awkward and it was like, Oh, he can't possibly do it. Well, wait a minute. He just did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there's something there. I remember at the beginning of mean streets of gadgets and that dog had a kind of a, a list where that really took advantage of, um, uh, small time recruits and otherwise, uh, and that list was really strong. Um, I think I ran it. I, kind of just took it and I ran it up to rank five on like the third day of the season um, because it was just really good. And then it kind of fell out of favor because then Pirate Warrior was discovered and everybody loved that. Um, But I think that Paladin's got a good amount of tools to really kind of help buffing smaller minions. So if you had a a good amount of small minions in your deck, I think that the tools are here now to make a really good deck if you're um, a savvy player and uh, you just... uh, go about it the right way i just think there's something here that could really end up being something especially with the uh the paladin uh weapon um it makes wimpy minions awesome and the death rattle on it is is really cool go ahead it just re-equips it you don't have to cast it again or anything and that's that's really super exciting yeah, let me have bonicus take over the next <laughs> <Yeah. week> is... <laughs> mm-hmm. are you so, sure he's the best oh, person to explain the mechanics of this card okay so <laughs> <That's the> point <laughs> 
So I might have read the weapon incorrectly multiple times. <laughs> so I definitely first read it as battle cry, give a minion in your hand plus four plus two. When it dies, return Valinar to your hand or return a copy to your hand or something. I don't know what my brain was thinking. And then I I asked in our chat, I'm like, why does everybody say because I, I eventually saw that it, or heard that people say that it re-equips. And I asked in chat, I'm like, why are people saying this goes infinite? You just play it once, and then you get another thing after the creature dies, and then they're like, oh, it's a death rattle. And I was <laughs> quite embarrassed. But uh, I, I think I probably disagree with you guys a bit on Paladin. I'm actually not super excited about what Paladin got. I personally think the best card they got is Potion of Heroism. That card seems seems yeah, quite good, good in, yeah. in a deck, you know, just in a lot of Paladin decks. It feel it's I kind of compare it in my mind to Death Speaker, which was a card that I was playing in my in my Zulok deck. Um, mm -hmm. but it's quite a bit better than that because obviously it costs less mana and draws you a card but uh overall i i'm not super excited about any of the paladin cards i think lanessa looks pretty good but i don't think will turn out to be as good as as a lot of other people seem seem to like it i do like the weapon i do like potion but uh overall i'm not super excited about any of the other cards but obviously willing to be to be proven wrong uh cold tarm seems like it could have have a spot, but I, I'm not sold yet. I'll have to see it see it played. I feel like before. it's a sleeper card, and then Sun. Yeah, I have to agree. Sun Sorrow is no uh, Sun Keeper. <laughs> well, yeah, just Paladin has two of the best cards ever created in yeah. Terim and Tyrion. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're they're not exact. Paladin's not exactly hurting right now, but um, yeah, it, this class definitely doesn't have me excited as some of the other classes do, but. What do you think? You what do you think, Hat? You're crazy. Call to arms. It gets three things, but not just any three things. Three things that you put in your deck on purpose. It's four yeah. mana. Go get three things that you wanted to play and play them all at the same time. It's, it's also a deck thinner. So, so all right, pro <laughs> I, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to be proven wrong. It's, I, I I have I some pretty bold. I have some bold predictions about some of these cards, and very willing to be wrong about a lot of them. It's I I mean, Paladin is kind of in the middle here. It's it's hard to say. I will say I wasn't sure about Valinir, but it's it's a what six mana for eight damage, and you keep getting that back. And I've lost to Tyrion and to Uther enough times to recognize that recurring weapon damage is pretty dangerous. And this is literally infinite weapon damage as long as you continue to have a minion in your hand. And they got Dry Gulch Jailer, which fills your hand with minions. So you can just play Dry Gulch Jailer and keep those recruits in your hand. Each one is a 1-mana 5-3 that gives you a 4-2 weapon when it dies. So would you play 1-mana 5-3 Death Rattle equip a 4-2 weapon? I would. I would play that card. So... By transforming those cards, as long as you keep your deck low curve... Now, I did cheat a little bit. The current number one legend deck is an aggro paladin deck with Call to Arms and Valinir. So, and it has two Dry Gulch Jailers. <laughs> it also plays double Unidentified Maul, which I was thinking about this a lot, but it makes sense. The, the Unidentified Maul has four effects that buff your minions. So if you play it in a deck that always has minions in turn one and two, you remove a lot of the conditionality. In that almost all of the effects are it, all the effects are good if you can guarantee you're on the board. So it's uh, I I don't know if Control Paladin got as many tools as we'd want, but I think there's something here. We talked about Benevolent Gin. We talked about uh, Lesser Pearl Spellstone, which if you buff that once, it's good. If you buff it buff it twice, it's great. But I definitely think this is a low curve benefit. It seems like Paladin got a lot more aggressive cards, which is good because it needed more early game value to compete. Paladin was kind of poor in this metagame outside of the Murloc build because it couldn't compete early game. And uh, and I think Valinir gives you that long-term value, which they seem to be giving to a lot of classes right now. Well, here, also, and, and I, I want to try and add a couple things just because I, I do think of Paladin in Wild a lot. So think of Call to Arms running while well, you're running Righteous Protector, Knife Juggler, Shielded Mini Minibot, Haunted Creeper, um, or even part of the Anything uh, package, <laughs> where you, you can thin your deck to get to the the other cards that like anything can happen. Um, 
it's very interesting to see what how it would affect the uh, wild side as well. So my last comment there. Mm. Okay, um, fair fair enough. Who who wants to talk about priest? Because <laughs> I think priest priest probably got the best cards in the set, and I don't I don't know if any of us really want to talk about it because I think we're all probably pretty tired of I'll talk playing about against priest. priest. I, I want to point can. out that I specifically asked before the show, can I not write write the priest paragraph? And then I ended <laughs> up writing the priest paragraph. I can't get away from it. Somebody save me. Oh, okay. So. As uh, Hat aptly corrected me and pointed out a few minutes ago, uh, Priest kind of got some really, really good removal. Um, let's see here. We got the Psychic Scream, right, that basically takes everything and puts it in your opponent's hand. And we got the, let's see, what the Dark Speaker, right? The Dragon that is a 3-drop, three 3-3, three, three, that does 3 damage to the whole board. Dustbreaker, yeah. Dustbreaker, yeah. I said four dust, mana. I, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. three mana. Don't give our viewers mana. a heart attack. And, okay. and Psychic <laughs> Scream shuffles the minions into their deck, not their hand. To Reddit. Yeah. To Reddit, everyone. Pitchforks and torches. <laughs> yeah. Three mana board. We, clear we asked someone to cover for it, and then we torch him for covering. Yeah. <laughs> Grant, thanks for it's everything okay. you do, but you're wrong about everything. It's fine. I've learned that it's okay to be wrong. I don't take it personally. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... I've already tried out Duskbreaker today, and <laughs> wow, it's pretty darn strong. I mean, we used to think that a five-mana Excavated Evil that put that card back in your opponent's hand was really good. And and people still say it's good, and especially in Wild. Um, and getting a Dragon Tag on a minion that do also does damage for four cost, is, it's right there. Because that's the turn you want to be clearing the board, honestly. Um, Shadow Word Horror was one of those cards you're hoping for when you're playing Big Priest. You want that card against a lot of uh, the faster decks, and you're like, man, I hope this comes down, and you're not sad when you get it on turn four. Having a minion, uh, as we say, removal on a stick to be able to do that, that's just super, super strong. Um, I think it could, by itself, bring back the Dragon Priest archetype and make it a, a high-tier um, class, again, for archetype, I mean. Um, I think that Psychic Scream can basically make a, a grind a grind priest. I mean, priests can do that anyways, but I think it's just one more tool in the box to 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 bore your opponent to death and frustrate them, you know, out of, you know, to the uh you know, bottom right. So, um I don't know that t priest will be out of tier 1 for a long time because of this, but we'll see. What do you guys think? I have already played against both Dustbreaker and Psychic Scream today in the minimal number of games that I've played, and uh, Psychic Scream made me want to do exactly that scream really loudly. <laughs> and I played against someone playing Dragon Priest, and he played three Dustbreakers against me and pretty much broke my spirit. <laughs> Uninstall. So, yeah, pretty... Uh, uh, there's not a whole lot to say. Th those two cards, if those were the only two cards Priest got, Priest won huge um, mm -hmm. in this set. And I think there's all there's some other kind of niche cards in there that, that could definitely also see play. Uh, Kenny, what, what, what's, your, uh, what's your take? You guys got the main points already. I, I, the only thing I'm going to add there is I'm, I'm excited to play Priest more because I don't have it at Golden yet. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, I think the another thing about Priest that's kind of, and I, I, I've been on this hype train, so you'll have to forgive me, but Priest does one thing better than anybody else, is they also have the a lot of cards that buff the health of the cards that they have, right? Um, and I think there's something here to kind of augment a inner fire kind of Priest. Um, people, uh, Vicious, is it true? Vicious, Vicious Syndicate has been saying that um, inner fire priest, uh, silence priest, I guess they call it is actually a, like, kind of like the unsung hero deck. Like it's a, actually a good deck, but nobody plays it. Right. Um, you know, with twilight acolyte, you know, if you're, it's a card that reads, if you're holding a dragon swap, it's this minions attack with another minions it can be your minion, can be your opponents. Um, and more tools to swap health between that void ripper and inner fire, um, mechanics, uh, seems like it's making 
uh, silence priest or OTK priest, like a even easier thing to pull off with some of this stuff. So I think those other cards are, I think which, it could be fun. Which might go to say, uh, like an OTK priest with the, um, the legendary, uh, give your opponent two turns, may not give them enough uh, early early game, and then you have low cost uh, spells to just do OTK with your two turns to set up a nice OTK and with your priest. So we may see OTK with that dragon um, come to side. Who knows? We laughed at it when it first came out because like, who wants to give your opponent two turns first? But if you have enough on board or time, you know, it depends. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. I I'd like to hear Hat, though. What Hat, what do you want to say uh, about Priest, your favorite I class? I think, uh, stop. You <laughs> stop. Which it's, uh, uh. So I think that that Temporis was printed to make the Discover bonus for Priest less effective on Nether Spite Historian. Because if they didn't print it, the only two priest dragons would be Duskbreaker and Draconid Operative, and that seems really unfair. So I think they had to print a bad <laughs> dragon. They had to print a bad dragon. And Temporis, I don't care what anyone says, this card is bad. It is a bad card because you know how when you're a mage and you let your opponent pop your block because you know you have another turn? Well, when you play Temporis, you're giving your opponent an ice block and 20 mana and double attacks and all, like, you give all their, their minions Wind Fury. You give them an ice block, and you give them a pop of uh, Twig of the World Tree. You give them 10 mana. So giving your opponent 10 mana, all your minions gain Wind Fury, and you can't be killed next turn is not a good thing to do, especially not for a 7 mana 6-6. Six, six. Mm. You have to guarantee you'll live, and you have to guarantee that you will kill them when you get your turns back. I'm not willing to do that. I'm glad they printed the card because, again, it nerfs Nether Spite Historian, because otherwise the Discover bonus gets you one of two really, really powerful class dragons. Um, I don't think that Priest is overpowered, but I think it will be overrepresented. It reminds me of what Jade Druid was at the end of the last meta before they printed Ultimate Infestation and, uh, and Spreading Plague, that it will see more play than it deserves, and it will frustrate people unnecessarily because the deck is not actually as good as it seems. And Raza Priest was already there. The win rate was on the 50% dot, if not lower, most of the time. But people kept playing it, and when you lose to it, it feels terrible. And when you beat it, it's like, ah, oh, I just beat that guy, but it's not anything special. And I think we're also underlooking Gilded Gargoyle, which I think is really powerful, and Lesser Diamond Spellstone, which I think is quite abusable, in that you can resurrect a wide variety of minions. Twilight Acolyte is a really powerful anti-aggro tool, and Twilight's Call... I don't know what the combo is there, but I know there's something. I do think Dragon Soul is probably not quite good enough, but there's there's a lot of value here, and I like that they're making all the classes equally good, except, well, when we get to Shaman, I don't think they really are. And I don't I don't know if the Priest class mechanics make for fun gameplay, and that's the biggest problem I have with the class is that some people really like it, but it's mostly based on resource denial, and repeated resource denial does not feel fun for the person that gets denied. Mm, true. But it'll be good. All good points. Yep. All right, let's move on to Rogue. And I was extremely surprised as Hat was talking about uh, not wanting to do Priest. He said that I could do the uh, portion on Rogue. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just get right into it. I actually am looking at all of the rogue cards and, uh, surprisingly, I think every single one of them is def has potential to see play. I'm not saying they all will. I think it's very unlikely that all of them will see play, but, uh, I could see each one of these fitting into kind of a, a different archetype. Uh, both of the legendaries have gotten quite a bit of, uh, Quite a bit of press. Sonya Shadow Dancer seems like it could fit into a lot of different archetypes. Uh, King's Bane has had a lot of debate over it. Uh, I think that before uh, Cavern Shiny Finder was uh, was revealed, I think King's Bane looked quite a bit worse. But I think hopefully the combination of the both of those uh, make it uh, you know make it better. I think overall, you know, Rogue seems kind of like a winner to me. Uh, I was actually thinking a lot about the Spellstone, and I know a lot of other people are uh, 
not really liking it. But the way I was trying to think about it is if you're playing the Spellstone, you're trying to play, obviously, a Death Rattle Rogue deck, which means you want to have, you know, your Jade Swarmers in there, and you kind of have all of these small minions. And so you're, the biggest issue with that, with a deck like that is getting out of, kind of getting out of the early game. So you have all these small creatures to trade with their other small creatures. And I'm thinking that this card might be able to be used instead of like a Vile Spine Slayer because in your Death Rattle deck where you're probably playing a card like Cobalt Illusionist, you don't want to be, you know, accidentally making copies of cards that are not Death Rattles. And so you can use all your small minions to kind of get rid of their small minions and use the Spellstone to wipe the bigger minions. And uh, then by that time, ideally, your smaller minions start making big jades and you can kind of snowball the game from there. I don't know that that will actually happen, um, but that's kind of what I'm trying to envision with a, with a deck like that. Um, the, my last note here is just that I really hope evasion is not good. I don't think that it necessarily will be good. It definitely is worse than ice block, but uh, it if it is good, I can see it leading to some very, uh, uh, very bad game gameplay. What did I? Yeah, it just it feels like it uh, could lead to some very negative experiences. Uh, all right, what what do you have to say about Rogue there, Hat, a fellow Rogue enthusiast? Uh, it's <laughs> I. Well, I think that Rogue benefited a lot this expansion which might mean that i'm wrong because every expansion people have said rogue got the shaft and then rogue turned out to be really really good it's happened about three sets in a row and shaku mm -hmm. the soul collector was maligned as one of the worst legendaries that rogue has been printed and then it immediately saw play and shara's in the corpse flower was, was maligned as one of the worst rogue legendaries in a while and immediately saw play lillian voss Turned out to not be great, or at least not be played. But it's uh, I, the rogue cards have historically been better than they look, and these ones look really good. King's Bane allows you to go infinite as a rogue, and I like that a lot. Sonya Shadow Dancer, I'm super excited to try out with all the value minions. Um, I agree that Evasion, it's effectively Holy Light. Uh, it's You stop the second and third sources of damage on a turn. If they have more than that, then it's obviously great, but you're also really behind on board. So the card is frequently, I would plan on it two mana gain six life. If you're okay with that, then go ahead and play it. Um, Falderay Strider and Elven Minstrel, Rogue got a lot of love in the four slot. Cavern Shiny Finder, I think, is one of the better cards in the set, and I'm excited about Cheat Death a lot. So there's a good amount mm -hmm. of, of goodness here, and I'm 100% playing Kingsbane Miracle Rogue on stream tonight, like within the next mm -hmm. two hours. If I'm not Kingsbaning within the next two hours, I'll be very upset. I could I could definitely see the sequence happening quite a bit of going auctioneer prep cheat death. I think that is a uh, that is a quite oof. good possibility that that is a sequence that happens. It's that they, they have a lot. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing that too. Uh, Kingsbane I feel is good and makes some of the, the other cards good as well. Like the the um, I don't know. Uh, the weapon rogue would be kind of interesting, but I think it fits better in the miracle rogue. So, hmm. you got anything to add there, Grant? No, nah, you guys kind of said everything I was thinking. Um, I'm excited about Jade Rogue, but I think I've said that before on Velens and otherwise. So I'll just let's keep moving. Cool. All right. So the next class is Shaman, and I think Shaman. Wrong button. Uh, I think Shaman might have gotten a little bit of the shaft this time. It uh, didn't seem to get a whole ton of love. Uh, I do think that Grumble feels like it could help out the uh, elemental ar archetype. And I actually saw Healing Rain as it was revealed uh, kind of after everything else. And I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about it. I think it might single-handedly revive the Control Shaman archetype. I kind of wish... Apple was here to to talk a little bit more about it, but I saw mm. a deck list uh, from him that had it in it, and I saw him playing a couple screenshots of him playing it. I think it uh, that card seems uh, really strong. You know, uh, I believe that 
I wasn't around, but I believe that Healing Wave uh, was seen in quite a few of the Control Shaman lists, and this seems quite a bit better than than Healing Wave to me, at least. Uh, to, you know, it's kind of one of those things you'll just have to see what the board states look like when you when you play that card, but. Uh, really looking at the rest of the class, I think you're kind of going to be looking, Shaman's going to be looking at rotation and hoping that uh, the other decks get quite a bit less powerful and uh, it generates some some better cards in, in the next expansion. But I do think that, you know, some of the cards have potential, just maybe not potential right now. Uh, Kenny, what do you what do you think of the Shaman Shaman cards? Yeah, uh, I would have to agree uh, with everything. I have a comment on a card later, but I think we're going to go over that, so I'm not going to take time on that. Um, I'll kick it over to Grant again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see like Control Shaman come back. I think that was one of the big tools that Shaman was missing was a healing card, because Healing Wave, back when Control Shaman was out, just was awful, because... They'd cast it, and you'd think they have it, and they'd get 14 because by the time they'd cast it, they'd have the bigger minions, and they'd always win the draw. And I think that was one of the big things missing. So I, it wouldn't surprise me if it came back, but I agree. I think these pieces, like some of the other classes, I think they're setting it up for later. Um, I kind of find it funny that they wanted to keep exploiting the evolve mechanic, like the kind of like the lotto <laughs> lotto <laughs> mechanic, I guess you could say. Um, and I know, I know, like I know, Eve on Balance was super excited about trying that out. She wanted to, you know, just evolve everything and see what happens. And honestly, if that's your jam and that's how you find excitement in Hearthstone, then maybe Shaman's a win for you. So, but that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I do think that card is good, but I think it's worse than Evolve, <laughs> current right. currently the way the way things are. But uh, I do think it has potential. Uh, mm -hmm. Hat, any uh, any other comments? People are sleeping on Crushing Hand. Two mana deal, eight to a minion is really, really good. Um, I think that card is underrated. Healing Rain, I think, will be irritating to people for a while. Um, and it's a... It's been confirmed that it only heals damaged characters, so I think there's something to that. Mm -hmm. And Unstable Evolution allows your Evolve deck to be a little different in construction, in that you don't have to go wide, you can go tall and keep rolling until you get two minions that you want. So it's mana intensive. It's a little bit slower, but you can you can play a slower, taller deck and get there and get there with fewer minions than you could otherwise. Like if you play a five drop on turn five, turn six you can make it a ten drop. There's something to be said for that. So I think that the that unstable evolution is easily the best card that Shaman has seen. Now, I still think Shaman is being viewed through the the lens of the sins of the fathers, so to speak. It's Shaman was <laughs> overpowered for so long that yes. there's something to be said for Blizzard overcorrecting and not printing good Shaman cards for a year because they messed up when Shaman was already the best deck in the meta. And like, well, how about a one mana Pyroblast? And Spirit Claws proved to be way, way too strong. But mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to when they get back to Shaman being a deck they can print good cards for. But the class has always struggled with its identity. It's it's overload is the worst class mechanic in the game and it's not even close. Mm -hmm. And so they I think, you know, Crushing Hand is a good example of a of a well balanced overload card. But they are struggling to find out how do we make Shaman good, not too good, but not not good enough. And I don't think they've ever figured that out. There's never been a time when Shaman has been a part of a balanced meta. It's either not there or overwhelming. The closest it got was token shaman earlier. But you can't have token shaman and keep printing AOE and cheap taunts. Can't do that. Mm -mm. All why right. Don't you, yeah. Why don't you nope. keep talking? <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. don't you tell? You, this was the class you wanted to talk about. So tell us about why you <laughs> wanted to talk about warlock well, hat. I will pre. I will preference it by saying that I wrote it, but uh, I will say that hat has more precedence with warlock being a writer for warlock. So take it away. <laughs> All right, so Warlock, so to read to read Kenny's paragraph, which I think is excellent, Warlocks are seeing a different play style for this set, and it's a, lot of, it's a lot about manipulating your own life total. Some of that is to work with the Spellstone. Um, some of that is that Control Warlock's weakness has always been about, uh, about not having enough healing, 
and the there's a really there's a lot of notable cards here like i think we need to talk about dark pact one mana kill one of your own minions and gain eight life anti keelbot was always really powerful in handlock style strategies which were the old control warlocks from back in the day that relied on molten giant and dark pact is a really effective way to sacrifice some cheaper minion to gain a lot of life now rin is i don't think anyone's expecting it to be competitive a lot of people are playing it right now the question is is it good enough Probably not, but we've seen a lot of people try it out, and it's not terrible. Cataclysm has a lot of options. It clears the board consistently and reliably, and it works pretty well with the class quest. I think, Bot, were you the one that played the quest reward on turn 5 against a control deck? Was that you? I I did do that. I, I even got to play it with the Imp, which, for those of you who are not aware of that interaction... If you have the imp that whenever you discard cards, you draw cards, it does work. You you will, I got mm-hmm. to go imp, coin, cataclysm, complete my quest, and draw a new hand of six cards. And uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I think the Dark Pact seems like a card you also want in that deck because you're generating all these free three twos and you're kind of getting a little bit behind in the early game. So having that... Uh, health to get you back up after that I think is important. I don't think I quite got there yet on the quest version of the deck, but um, I'll definitely be trying it out again, and I'm sure somebody much smarter than me is going to uh, be able to hopefully figure it out, and I'll enjoy playing my golden version of Lakari Sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what do you think, Grant? Um, I'm thinking a lot about the card uh, Hooked Reaver right now in i think there's a lot of cards and a lot of stuff that's kind of come out that makes me think that a mid-range style of warlock is now probably uh preferable because i mean uh if you don't know a, a hooked reaver is a four mana four four reads battle cry if you have 15 health or less gain plus three plus three and taunt <laughs> now <laughs> i don't know about you but uh metas where you have four mana seven sevens you know those cards are usually good and this one has taunt um, and with the new healing mechanics and stuff like that, where we see, uh, and removal and some of the really, really excellent minions like vulgar homunculus and stuff like that. Um, I think warlocks in a really good position to be a tier one deck in, in a lot of different, uh, iterations, both in a control, a mid range and a faster paced zoo. So right. I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Yeah, well, I'll be talking about Hooked Reaver a, a little bit later. <laughs> so yeah. I, I can't wait to hear kind of more more of your insight into that because I have I have some probably differing views about it. But uh, Kenny, what what do you have to say about uh, Warlock? Um. Yeah. I want. We have. Okay. We keep saying we're going to talk later about this because we're going to go over the top <laughs> three cards and an overrated card that we we consider for each host individually so i'm going to save some of my comments on on one of them here okay. but also i would say keep an eye on bulgar homunculus or homunculus homunculus, homunculus. yes um it's one of those good. medieval words that you don't use it's no there's all that those times you use homunculus in a sentence in day-to-day life right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was on my way to work and i saw this crazy homunculus it's yeah, doesn't come up too often. I <laughs> I dri- think I think that card <laughs> is driver yells you homunculus. Yeah. Oh, it comes up all the time here in Gadgetzan. I do think that <laughs> if Zoo is going to exist without Keliseth, Vulgar Homunculus is the reason to have a two drop in your deck. It's uh yeah. it's this is Wormrest Agent, which if you didn't play before, it's two mana one four if you have a dragon in your hand, gain plus one attack and taunt. This is that without the condition. It's really, really strong. And as we've seen from Aggro Druid, cheap taunts and aggro decks are really good at letting you develop and just build this kind of incremental pressure over time. If there is if there is a zoo deck that does not play Kaliseth, it will involve Vulgar Homunculus and a few other two drops. I mean, you get to play Galaka Crawlers, which is really cool. I think there's there's an opportunity to have a zoo deck with a more sane curve. And it's because it's of that a, guy. It's definitely a good sub card if you don't have Kaliseth. Yep, for sure. So. Yeah, you can put I've in two played... Galak Crawlers and two Homunculi. I have already played uh, against a Zoo deck <laughs> that was playing the Homunculus, and it, it was quite good against me. So, uh, anyway, Hat, why don't you keep talking about Warrior? Hat, keep talking? That's out of character. 
Um, <laughs> I'll talk about Warrior. So Warrior <laughs> is in a weird spot in that this feels kind of like Hunter, where they took one archetype and Blizzard just shoved it in our faces. Like, what you're going to do with Warrior in this set is you're going to gain some armor and you're going to recruit some minions. Those are the two things you're going to do. Big minions. And so if you like recruiting minions and gaining armor, by all means, you can do that. If you don't like that, eh. It's, you know, Kobold Barbarian, 3 mana, 4, 4, attack a random enemy at the start of your turn. Not terrible. <laughs> Reasonable aggro card. Well, it's, if you play it on an empty board, there's there are worse things. That's It's big, and it's hard to trade into, and it gets to attack. But Ogre Brute is not currently seeing play, and this is not all that different from Ogre Brute. So... It's, I don't see a lot of aggressive cards here, but there's Reckless Flurry, which is three mana, spend all your armor, deal that much damage to all minions. That's a really powerful, cheap board clear. Bladed Gauntlet as a weapon. It's a, it's a two mana weapon that if you have armor early on, it's a, it has attack equal to your armor and it can't attack heroes. So that's meant to be the replacement for Fiery War Axe. Obviously not as good, but there's options there. And... There's a lot of really powerful recruit mechanics here, mechanics here. If you get to the late game, the chance of pulling out Groms and Sleepy Dragons and Primordial Drakes and Sawgoth the Slitherer and whatever else big taunt you want or something else that might be more relevant. You know, it's I think Woke Lever is probably what Varian wanted to be in that it's mm-hmm. a late game threat that guarantees you have infinite value used at your leisure. And you also get to clear smaller minions. There's something to be said there, but it's a slow strategy in a format where Jade Idol still exists. And you have to be able to succeed in that environment. I don't know if Warrior got those cards. But don't just take my word for it. What do you think, Grant? <laughs> I think you're on point. I think that... <sighs> it Warrior has felt like it's just... You either play Pirates or you play like a long, taunty... Um, armor up and wait out the game kind of style. And I, I have, I myself have had a hard time enjoying that style of of play. Um, There's a reason why I don't have a golden warrior yet. And a lot of people do is some people just love control warrior and control, control, armor, armor up, drop the big threats at the end. And that's the game. Um, It just seems like a lot of what they gave us like here, have some more armor cards or here, recruit a minion, or they're kind of forcing us into a big archetype. Like you'd kind of mentioned. And i I don't know. I'm not feeling it. It could be good, but who knows? What do you think, Kenny? You know what I like? Um, I, I, I like the Spellstone. Um, I forget which... There was a card in this set, and again, it's so new, and I'm bad with names, but it has to do with uh, if you have a, a large spell, um, Do like it works off of a, a high mana spell and if you have this in your warrior deck like it's like kind of a control type card my gosh i'll have to research this and look it up again um but this would go really well with that and and just the uh, i i think it's better than than what people may think i i think they may be overlooking it but um that's my initial thing i don't know how i feel about gaining a bunch of armor and different cards about gaining armor and getting rid of it Mm-hmm. With, I, I will say that it is a, a good clear. Like, Warrior has not had a good clear, um, a board clear, like Reckless Flurry. So it, it seems like it's a really good card, but then you do get rid of all your, your armor. So what else are you going to add to your hand to gain more armor? Like, I, we'll have to see where that kind of plays out. But I like the Spellstone. Mm. I think it'll see play. I mean, Warrior has... Um... Sleep with the Fishes is probably the best board clear that's been printed in recent memory, but it took a while for it to start seeing play when the low mm-hmm. minion count um, early game warriors uh, really came into their own. I agree that Blade Flurry, or Reckless, not Blade Flurry, uh, now I'm sad. Uh, Reckless Flurry is definitely more flexible when you need to go a little bit bigger. It's better against like an Evolve board, and it's more it's closer to a third and fourth brawl with consequences as opposed to another Sleep with the Fishes or... You know, some other cheaper board clear, like a Death Spite proc or something like that. Mm. 
And I have nothing to say about Warrior, so let's just get into our top three cards and one overrated card. We all put a couple of these down, so I'm interested to see what you guys have for this. Kenny, let's start with you. Oh, I was in the middle of looking up that uh, Spellstone. All right. Oh. Um, I'll start it off, though. Uh, okay. So uh, the first one I'm going to mention here is uh, Murmuring El- Elemental. So it's it's the Shaman card. Uh Oh, I should pull it up again. One of you want to say what it is? I think it's a... It's a two-mana 1-1 one, one rare that says your next battle cry triggers twice. There I think it go. says this turn. Yeah, yes, so if you think turn. about it, it's it's like another Bran. So bringing Bran back to standard. Um, it Here's my, my, my defense of it. It benefits Jade Shaman, Evolve Shaman, Elemental Shaman, Totem Shaman shells. Like the 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 basis of those decks um so it it it's i think it's good and all around card for those battle cry type cards that you get benefits out of so i i think it's a sleeper card and i try to kind of stip, stick with sleeper cards uh, in my top three here um i'll let you guys comment I'll, I'll mention all all of them here initially and then you can comment if you want but next one's the cobalt cobalt librarian that's the uh, Warlock, uh, one mana, two, one. Battle cry, draw a card, deal two damage to your hero. Um, my notes on that here, it, it's a Warlock draw on turn one. Uh, board presence with a possible uptrade. And Spellstone Synergy. Like, uh, you get a lot out of one card. <laughs> um, also a little pesky minion you have initially on the board, so... You may see a lot from this card, this set. Uh, that's my my sleeper uh, one there. Although it may not be so sleeper, I think I think people may see that. And then uh, let's see. I have to pull this one up again. It is troll, and it's a carnivor- carnivorous cube. Uh, re- reason why I was ch- picking this one, um, if you think about like all the board clears and and things that may happen. If you have a, an important minion you want to keep on board, you can still have a decent minion on there. Uh, so it's a five mana, four, six. Battle cry, destroy a, fan, a friendly minion. Death rattle, summon two copies of it. Um, I, I'm definitely open to see how this is uh, implemented with different decks. It is a neutral card, so I think it's even better <laughs> in that sense. Um, so I, I, again, another sleeper one that I don't think too many people are talking about that may be good. Yes, it can be silenced. Yes, there are ways to deal with it, but, mm-hmm. you know, all, all cards basically have a way of dealing with it. Um, who knows? So I, I think it may be good. My, uh, overrated card I'm picking is the rogue card, uh, rogue secret evasion, uh, which is the, was it two mana? Yeah. Two mana. Secret, after your hero takes damage, become immune this turn. Um, I think everyone's just comparing it to Ice Block. Ice Block's way better than it. I think it, it, again, this is one people that are really excited about, but I feel like it may be overrated with its implementation. But um, that's just my feeling. Uh, my, oh, my, I had a comment here. So, um, no, I didn't have a comment. That's just my feeling. I'm going off my feelings. <laughs> Fair enough. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. <laughs> yes. I'm done. <laughs> that's it. That's right. Grant's comment. Uh, what do you say about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not a... It doesn't look like a very standard list. This this was, These are not the cards that jump out to me, but I'm glad you're excited about them. Um, because... yeah, and again, I was trying to kind of go off the, the side, off the the path here and pick something that may not be seen or, you know, point out things that were like, okay, this is like murmuring elemental, you, you know, most people aren't going to be gung ho about it, but there are benefits to that maybe people didn't see about it. Like something that, um, uh, I'm not choosing these as top three cards, but I'm saying that these are, I'm kind of going more the sleeper route, like Got something it. that's beneficial. Murmuring Elemental is definitely one of those cards that you have to look through every single card that they reveal and every single card that has that is already printed and be like, okay, does this break it? Does it does it break this card? Does it break this mm-hmm. card? Like there's uh 
it's definitely a card that has a very high potential and we'll just kind of have to see if its potential gets realized uh, anybody else have any comments before we move on to hat i like kobold librarian i like drawing cards i like paying life for them i like one mana two ones it will be much better than it already is when you don't face patches in one expansion but it is still already basically a free draw and one mana kill your opponent's patches draw a card it seems fine and late game it's just a free draw so yeah i like that card a lot cool all right let's get into your cards all right so i picked three cards that are all various stages of value flanking strike Four mana hunter spell, deal three damage to a minion, put a three three wolf and or a three three beast into play. Any time that you get to develop and remove at the same time, you are ahead of the game. Uh, I I don't know if I said this pre show or during the show. If I'm repeating myself, it's just that good. I got legend with fire plume phoenix last month, which is a worse version of this <laughs> card. And mm -hmm. it, there's you just you get to kill a thing and make a thing. And in terms of the hunter spells, it's not a minion itself. There's, there's just so much to love here. Cavern Shiny Finder, 2 mana, 3, 1 common. Uh, it's a rogue spell, a rogue minion. It's a murloc, and when it comes uh, when it comes into play, when you battle cry, you go get a weapon out of your deck. I've seen a lot of decks it's playing a just... It, it's a, it finds shiny things. I'm pretty sure it's a murloc. Fairly confident. No, it's a, it's a kobold. It's oh. got a candle on his head. I thought it was a murloc. My mistake. All right, so it's, it's not a murloc. It's a kobold. Yeah, I don't know that you, I don't know that you're playing this in a Murloc Rogue deck anyway. Yes. It's well, either way, <laughs> it's you either get your King's Bane or you get a Shadow Blade, and both are good. And what I like about this card, if you're playing even just Shadow Blade, which already you is playing a list with two of those, you get to play Deadly Poison because you're guaranteeing it has a target. It's you already know it has a target in Rogue, but you get to buff something else if you want to, because you know you'll have a weapon. So it's it's a reliable early game minion. Again, one health isn't necessarily great right now. But if they can't deal with it early, it's still just pressure. Like against a priest, they have to spirit lash this or potion of madness, something else into this or shadow were painted. Otherwise, it's three a turn plus a weapon is pretty solid. And uh, and then branching paths, the druid card, it's the four mana rare spell. And you choose twice. You either get to gain six armor, draw a card, or give you minus plus one attack. Flexibility wins games. And this card is good in every matchup because you can do everything with it. You can gas back up, you can buff up your minions, or you can gain 12 armor, or you can do any combination of that, whatever you want to do. Any kind of flexibility like that is going to be the way to win games, and Druid has historically been better when it's had more choices. Even though this doesn't work with Thandral, which I'm really glad it doesn't, that would be... I would get tired of that real quick if it worked with Thandral, so I'm glad it doesn't. My overrated card... Furbolg Mossbinder. It's a 5 mana 2-2 two, two common that gives 2 adjacent minions plus 2 plus 2. I have spent too much time this week explaining why this card is worse than Bone Mare by a large <laughs> margin. There are good 5 drops out there already. Play Cobalt Scalebane instead. <laughs> Cobalt Scalebane is a better card. This card requires you to have 2 minions on board, requires you to need to buff both of them, requires you to not be vulnerable to board clear after you do so, and it's still a 2-2, two, two, not a 5-5. Five, five like bone mare bone mare is a threat by itself mm -hmm. F a five mana two two is really not and if you're buffing your minions you don't want to evolve them because then you erase the buff so <laughs> it's not the card for evolve shaman the card for evolve shaman is probably the one that makes a minion into a six six because then if they kill the six six then you evolve the one one but even then i don't see i don't see this card seeing play and I, I see it being worse than five drops in many other classes, including a common neutral right now that's also a dragon, so it doesn't die to priest removal. So, yeah. Mm. Solid. Anybody have any comments? All right. I'm actually going to change up and uh, have you go next, Grant. Sure. Okay, so uh, my top three for the time being, and I, I know I've said it like three or four times already, but starting off with Void Ripper. The reason I like this card is, it, okay, there was a card printed in the Grand Tournament called Confuse, and it did the exact same thing, except it was a spell, and it never saw play. It was a spell only for Priest. Um, and so there was very limited application. We didn't have the card pool we have now. 
Um, but now with all, if you look at a lot of the cards, a lot of the cards have big butts and low attack. A lot of cards have that option, especially dragons. Um, Druid cards have that. Hadronox has that. There's lots of application uh, in terms of uh, Zoo that has like a lot of cards like this. So if you can build a sort of flood style play and whether w w with multiple different classes and you can use this sort of almost like a, like a bloodlust kind of turn, build a big deck with survivable minions. They don't have to be very strong in an attack because you don't care about that. You can flip it around and you can OTK people or you can burst them down and, and finish them off with that. That's why I like this card and you do it with a minion on a stick. So I think this this card could be see a lot of play. I'm really wanting to try uh, kind of like the Taunt Druid style that came out at the beginning of Knights of the Frozen Throne where you put Spreading Plague and then you put the, um, what's the 2-4 that gives all your Taunt 2-2 two, two, plus 2 is a, was a shell. Strong uh, Shell Scavenger. Yeah, yeah, that one. And I think that that could be really gross to having a board full of 2-7s um, or I should say, what, 3-7s, three, three excuse me three sevens uh going at your face or seven threes i should say that could be gross um so we'll see um my second pick was shown us sonia shadow dancer um hat kind of talked about it earlier but i think in any rogue deck this card is just useful being able to like trade your minions in and get new copies of them uh that's awesome i was thinking uh, i remember when knights of the frozen, Th frozen throne was released I remember Crip was playing sort of an all stealth deck. It was kind of interesting to watch him play, and he was almost convinced it was good. And I was thinking, you know, drop a stealth, uh, like a Shadow Rager, trade it in, get another one, drop it, you know, I didn't play another one and get some value so you could use your minions as removal and then not necessarily bleed out on your hand. So I think that that, in addition to like using uh, Death Rattle mechanics and stuff like that, a la Jades and whatnot, could be really useful. Um, I had mentioned it earlier, Hooked Reaver, the Warlock card, 4-4 for 4. If you have 15 or less health, and I know Bodicus is queuing up his apologetic here. Um, uh, I think as a Warlock player, uh, getting you're going to get low on health almost always, and being able to slap down a minion with uh, Taunt to kind of protect your minions, to kind of uh, push some extra face damage to scare your opponent. Uh, four damages, uh, four, the four costs is what I like about it because I can still build my board while kind of protecting it at the same time, late game, early game, no biggie. I guess it's just a 4-4-4-4, four, 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 so it could it could fizzle out a little bit there, but um, I like it. I think it could have, it has potential. Um, in terms of overrated cards, I'm probably going to kick myself for saying this, but I kind of have a sneaky suspicion based on play today that Katharina Winter Wist might be an overrated card. Uh, the reason I say that is, by the time I can play her, I'm either losing cr terribly or I'm already winning. So it's she seems like she could be, unfortunately, a win more card. Um, I don't like saying it because I want her to be awesome. I want her to like do sick things with Swamp King Dread and uh, King Crush. But I worry that um, unless I have the right kind of build, maybe a more of a mid rangey kind of build, she'd be really good. Um, I'm worried that she just may not be as good as maybe we think she is so anyways so those are my picks cool so i will go over my picks and i will try to go somewhat quickly because I, we're already going quite long even though we were trying to keep this uh show a little shorter but my top pick is this card that i have not heard a ton about i've heard a couple of reviews but it's called corridor creeper it is a seven mana five five that reads costs one less whenever a minion dies while this is in your hand and uh one thing you'll notice with my list is i think probably because i've been playing so much zoo lately pretty much every card on the list uh deals with that but i some of you will remember, I believe it was this last card review, there was a card printed, uh, or I guess revealed uh, in the last set called Bone Mare. And not a whole lot of people were talking about it, but a couple of the pros were saying that, you know, uh, it's eventually we're going to get to the state where everybody's kind of, whoever lands the first Bone Mare wins. And I think this card 
might have potential to be almost as good as Bone Marrow, which is seeing pretty much ubiquitous play among uh, all aggro decks. And the reason I say that is as long as we're in a patches meta, if you just think about how games go and you think about the early turns of a game, how many creatures get traded in the early game, especially with Zoo, your goal is obviously to play three one drops by turn three, I think there are quite a few situations where this card, you know, just ends up costing three mana when you when you trade off a few minions. And uh, the fact that it counts both minions, I think, is a big deal. And the reason another big reason why I think this card is so good is that uh, when you look at the bad matchups that were that Zulok has, you're looking at kind of the priest and the druid decks and a five five against druid is uh, is quite good. You need that five power to bust through your spreading play targets. And then against priest, you know, a lot of the priest decks, even like the spell heavy ones still play quite a few minions and you can get some trades in early. And the big thing that you want to do against priest is after they kind of wipe your board, you want to be able to rebuild right away. And I think this card lets you, uh, you know, kind of flood the board and then they wrath it. And then you develop a free five, five or really cheap five, five. And then another one of your big minions right away. So I think this car, uh, I'm kind of going out on a limb. I think this card is potentially extremely strong in Zulok. I also think it has a place in Evolve Shaman because so many cards get traded and evolving seven drops into eight drops. We know eight drop is like the sweet spot. So it's kind of right where you want to be. But that's a, that's the card I wanted to talk about the most. I, I don't hear a ton of people talking about it. Uh, I'm going to play with it a lot. I think it's quite powerful. Even if you draw it, uh, on a turn, you still get to make your trades for that turn and still get the discount. Um, yeah, I, I can't say enough about that card. Uh, another card on my list I have, same as Kenny, Cobalt Librarian. Obviously, it's just another great Zulok card. I think it could see play in a uh, controlling Warlock deck. Just, you know, traditionally cards like this have been nerfed. One drop, one mana, two ones with upside have been nerfed multiple times in the past. Um, it, it just seems like a card that is going to be quite good. And then uh, Duskbreaker, this doesn't obviously go into Zulok, but it seems like one of potentially one of the banes of Zulok. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I think that I would be extremely excited about this card if I wasn't consistently playing against Priest all the time. It, it its power level is through the roof. Um, I expect it to see a lot of play. It definitely feels like one of the top cards in the set. And I think my overrated card uh, is going to be Hooked Reaver. I know Grant was talking about it earlier. I'm looking at it in the context of Zoo. And when I look at a card like this, it seems like a card that you would want against the more aggressive matchups. I already think that Zoo has a really good matchup against the win the aggressive matchup so you don't really want another card in the deck that's good against those decks um and i think against like the more controlling decks like priest and druid you're not going to be able to get to that 15 life total by turn four which is when you need it to be a seven seven and just playing it as a four four i just don't think is going to be good enough uh you're not the only one obviously that uh has talked about this card i've seen it in quite a few zoo lists and I just don't think it's going to end up making the cut uh, when it comes down to it. But uh, as a uh, chat was saying earlier about me talking about Paladin, I could definitely be wrong about that and would be perfectly happy if I was. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I think that's it for the explanation segments. Uh, turns out we, we all have a lot to say about, about the new cards. <laughs> <laughs> What a surprise. What a surprise. At least, at least we did it a different way instead of going card by card by card. Yeah. And, and, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll do something like that. But um, at least for this episode. Not, we did <laughs> save time this way. I know it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> but if we were card by carding, yeah. we'd be less than halfway through. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, so uh, looks like we're going to skip emails and questions this week. Uh, you can write into the show by sending an email to coinconcede at gmail.com. And uh, let's get into the outro. Hat. 
I have it. I have it. <laughs> How long can this go on? <laughs> the answer really? today. The answer really today long. is about two hours. But you know what? For a card reveal show, we did just fine. So I'm I'm happy that we were able to speak to the impact of the card, as opposed to the specifics. And we also want to say thank you to a bunch of people. Thank you to Stefan L for letting us use his cover. Thanks to Old Guardian for his tournament statistics. They're super helpful. His blog's linked in our show notes. You can catch our blog post at coinconceit.com. You can follow us on Twitter at coinconceit. Contact us at coinconceit at gmail.com. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash coinconceit. Go to discord.coinconceit.com to talk to us and with a bunch of really awesome people in there. Grant's in there so you know you want to be in that Discord. Be in shop.coinconceit.com if you want to buy some stuff. Get yourself a coinconceit shirt. You can go on... Um, that's everything. Yeah. And big thanks to our producers, Reganis Prime, Kyle MCV, and Fluffy. It's so fluffy! <laughs> it's so fluffy. <laughs> and we got some shout outs as well. Kenny. Well, wait, one more thing. One more thing. I want to thank Grant uh, or uh, Watchman for coming on the show, too. So oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, my pleasure, guys. Thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks a bunch. It was a pleasure having you on. Um, but yes, yeah, my uh, if we're going over the shout outs, I, I do have one shout out. It would be my wife for, for bringing the most amazing baby into the world. So thank you. Um, mm. It's like uh, the expansion. I, I miss my baby already. I want to go after this and <laughs> just get some baby time. Baby and, time. Uh, and then maybe after that, some card time. But <laughs> it's the same thing. Same kind of feeling. So yeah, <laughs> take it. So my shout-out is not for anyone that was involved in the creation of life, or at least not specifically this week, but still important. <laughs> um, I want to thank all the people that were flexible with my coaching schedule this week, Smiley, Chris Fumbles, and Starlax. I had to move some stuff around this week, and all, everyone was super understanding and helpful. We had some really nice sessions, so thank you very much for working with my schedule. All right, Bodicus. So hopefully I don't draw draw out this out too long, but... Uh, I wanted to give a huge shout out kind of just in general to f all of the firefighters, uh, for those of you who, uh, aren't in discord and don't follow me on Twitter. Um, I live in Ventura, uh, very close to a huge fire that's been going on for the past few days. And, uh, I think it's really unfortunate that an event like this has to happen for, for me to think about. Uh, just all of the all the hard work that firefighters and police officers, you know, put in on a day to day basis. But I, I really just can't thank thank them enough for for that. You know, it's been a really stressful time. And uh, my parents live less than a mile away from some houses that burned down. And it's really just uh, heartbreaking to to see people who, who lost so much and just extremely thankful that, uh, you know, we were, we were, we had the luxury of time and we were able to pack everything up and, and be safe. And, um, I just encourage everybody to, you know, be thankful for, for everything. Cause you, you kind of don't really know what it's going to be like till you get into a situation like this and then everything's going crazy. So I'm, I'm just, you know, grateful for everybody who who reached out and who's who's doing their part and i hope that uh hopefully everything gets put out soon yeah mm -hmm. bodicus lives in my hometown and and yeah it, it, i'm right there with you I, when my baby was born like i'm you know up in the middle of the night while trying to go back to sleep i'm catching up with all my friends and family out where the fires are and and yeah mm -hmm. my I know many people that were affected by this. My cousin's house was burnt down to the ground. My like, there are many people. My a friend's uncle, my friend's uh, a friend of a friend actually had just recently closed their house last month, and it burned to the ground. So it, it just the mm -hmm. amount of things that happened uh, in that area is very devastating. And not only that, but. I mean, just the pure smoke in the area. They're running out of masks. They're running out of, you know, they're under a boil alert. There's like, it's a lot of things you don't think about. And that Bonix was talking about. So it, it's, yeah, my, my friend's uh, family farm got burnt down. It, yeah. It's, it's uh, a big deal. So yeah, my um, wife, my wife said to go stock up on, on water cause they're going to turn off the water 
or they were going to turn off the water to a lot of places in Ventura. And I go to the grocery store and look down the water aisle and there's nothing, just barren shells. And it's, there's just so many things that, you know, you don't know how, how it's going to hit till it happens. And, and it's just, it feels really weird saying that just cause like, you know, nothing really happened to me. I feel so bad that like all of these other people went through just terrifying experiences and, yeah, I, I I think just for the most part, I hope people were safe because people are what matter. You can replace uh, you can replace things, as, and while it really sucks to lose that stuff, you know you can't can't replace people. Mm -hmm. So not to downturn this, so yeah. I know we have a, we have a show to end. Sorry, um, but a uh, hat. Uh, are we? Did we, hold on. Uh, we already did hat. Yeah, we did hat. Right. It's Watchmen. It's my turn. Hey. Uh, mm -hmm. shout out to my awesome co-host at Velen's Chosen, uh, Rob and Eve. Uh, I don't get to say this on air too much, but I am so thankful to be a part of what we do over there. Um, shout out to you guys for letting me come on the show and talk cards and, you know, jump in on the hype train for the new expansion and shout out to my wife for cutting me loose to be able to do this this evening. So, <laughs> so, uh, she spends all day long at home with kids, uh, doing the mommy thing and, a shout out to moms out there that, you know, sacrifice and do that too. So, so anyways, that was a lot of shout outs for me, but, uh, but, uh, anyways, cool. yeah, they're valid. They're not. Yep. <laughs> valid, so. All right. So let, since you're already talking, where can people find you, um, outside of podcasting or guesting on our show? Well, if you really want to get in touch with me, you can go to Twitter and find me at Watchman HS. Um, I respond most to any time, uh, any time of the day, unless it's like, you know, 3 a.m., in which case, what are you tweeting at me for? Uh, <laughs> you can get on our Discord. Uh, I'll find you on the Coin Concede Discord if you message me directly, or you can jump in on the Valence Discord. At, uh, let's see, what is it? Discord.valencechosen.me, I think, right? Is that what those addresses like? I always get them messed up. But <laughs> there, and uh, let's see, what else? On uh, Battle.net, if you want to friend me, uh, at, let's see, it's Watchman, hashtag 1140. Spectate, offer 80 gold. I'll probably take you up any time of the day. So, yeah. He's underselling that. He has said in the past, if you have an 80 gold quest, I will pull my car over. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you blip it up on Twitter or something, I'll be like, yeah, hang on a sec. <laughs> Gas station right here. <laughs> that was the same way the, the starting the show. I was like, uh, um, yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, Bonicus. So you. you you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Bodicus HS, and I'd really appreciate it if you followed me on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Bodicus. I just got to over 50 followers, which I'm super excited about. I really appreciate everybody who stopped by this weekend, but that means I need to stream more because that's what you need to do when you get a bunch of followers. So expect to see me tweet and let you guys know when I'll be going live. Should be doing that quite a bit more often now. Sweet. And real quick, again, Cora's obviously casting her stone. You can find her uh, schedule. She usually announces it on Twitter at songbird underscore HS. Uh, find her on Twitch at songbird Cora. And yeah, she's still part of the crew. Hat, where can people find you? I you always can, call you Hat, but you go by Ridiculous Hat. So. I mean, Hat is fine. You can find me on Twitter at Ridiculous Hat. You can find me on Twitch immediately after this this show. Bust and open some packs at twitch.tv slash ridiculous hat. I'll bring along as many of the hosts want to come along. And uh, we'll be making the most strategic card back choices to maximize our legendary production. And uh, <laughs> and you can also find me in most Hearthstone discords. Go ahead and tag me and I will respond when I can. Um, and if you're in the coin can see discord specifically, I will make an effort to, I, I try and catch up on that every day if I can, if not more frequently, and I will respond to whatever I see, especially if you post in channel pun. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. And you can find me on Twitter at KCCO underscore gamer. Same thing on Twitch. Uh, I decided not to do it recently here, but maybe we'll get eventually. But um, I'm on Discord all the time. At me. I'll respond quickly or as quickly as possible. And uh, that pretty much does it. It's a nice, long, meaty show there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again, Grant, for coming on the show. Uh, Watchmen. And, uh, yeah, I hope you can uh, get this first. Well, you've done this before. 
You, you know how this goes. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to leave us with Keep Calm and Chive On, and if you see us on ladder, coin concede. Coin concede. Coin concede. Coin concede. Take cold comfort in your victory. You win. I can rest now. You win. For now. Now, your victory proves nothing. The day is yours. I choose death. You have triumphed. This time, this heart is yours. Did it.